Over the last several weeks, so much of the conversation in this country have been about the issues of social injustice and racial inequality, and we are uh, delighted to welcome to our program tonight to share some of that conversation with us from the WNBA's Phoenix Mercury, Brianna Turner. And, and Brianna, yours is such a unique perspective to bring the audience tonight. Uh, first and foremost, you're from Houston, which of course was the hometown of George Floyd, but maybe more to the point tonight, you are the daughter of two police officers. And so I wonder, with that as the context, how would you describe what these last few weeks have been like for you? I mean, it's just been kind of mind blowing. I mean, growing up in my household, we kind of had discussion about police brutality and the systemic racism that plagues this country. And I think just having two black officers as parents just puts me like in a different category because I'm able to see both sides. Obviously, I see the frustration of people on social media um, with all the trending videos of police brutality going on. But then at home, it's like, I know that not all cops are bad. I mean, it's hard to convince people of that, but just to know that there are those on the good side, even though we're seeing so much of the bad right now. Brianna, what conversations have you had with your mom and dad about this during this time? Um, they both strongly denounce police brutality. Um, they just both agree it has no place. They're sworn in to protect and serve, not to protect and instill fear in citizens. So, I mean, they strongly denounce it and don't think it has any place in any law enforcement agencies in, the, in this country. They're not the only members of your family that I know you've been talking to about this. If we could put this tweet up, uh, something that you posted on Twitter, and it is a photo of your great-grandmother, whose name is Mildred Ware. You see she's holding a sign that says she was born in 1927. How much longer do we have to keep demanding equality? And in it, you describe a driveway protest with your 92-year-old great-grandmother. What can you tell us about that experience and, and her feelings on all of this? So I kind of just brought the protest to her. So I made some signs and we kind of slid on the driveway and um, held our signs up for everyone that passed by. And just knowing her and everything she's been through growing up, she grew up, she was born in the 1920s, obviously like a very different time. Um, she spent the 40 years of her life under Jim Crow laws in the South. And I mean, she went to protest and I asked her, like, did you remember any protests growing up? And she was like, yeah, I mean, I was in them. Um, she just basically said that she didn't think that at this point in her life in 92, that we'd still be protesting for equality. She kind of thought that when she was younger, that um, future generations wouldn't have to go through the same things that she went through. I mean, she's obviously like really sad that her great granddaughter is out here advocating for equality, but she finds that it's necessary. Um, they have, everyone needs to know that we're here. We have a voice. We have to be heard. We will be heard and that we're not backing down. You also tweeted over the weekend about the most recent police shooting in Atlanta. What, what are your emotions having seen that video? I mean, it's just so frustrating. Um, obviously he was, yes, he was asleep in the driveway, might've been intoxicated, but I mean, and obviously, like, he ran away, but running away from the cops is not, and it's not just a foul to be shot dead for that. I mean, cops are sworn to protect and serve, and when they're sworn in, they're only using deadly force in a case where they feel like their life is in danger or the uh, suspect is endangering others. And if a man is running away with his back turned, I don't think that he's in danger to an officer holding a gun. So, I mean, obviously, we're going to go through, like, due process and have the courts figure it out, but... I think that this is a very much a developing story that needs to keep being looked into. And Kyrie Irving and, and some other high-profile NBA players have talked about not playing while the protests are going on. What are your thoughts on that? Me personally, I go back and forth all the time. Some days I go to the gym and I'm focused and I'm working out. And other days I'm at the gym and all I'm thinking about is everything happening in the world. I, I can't concentrate. I think like, what, what more can I do? What can I say? What protests can I go to? What petition can I sign? So for me, it's definitely going back and forth. I don't think it's a right or wrong way, whether um, people play or people don't. Obviously people have their opinions and want to do what's best for them. Some people, they could, they could play and use that platform bigger uh, with, within their league. Some people already have a big platform their own so they can spread the message more um, solo. So I think that it's just a personal decision that everyone has to make to see how they can make that impact off the court. Finally, I see that you are wearing the more than an athlete t-shirt. And I just wonder from your unique perspective and the life experience you've had, what is your message to anyone who might tell you that you should stick to sports and you shouldn't get involved in other matters? 
I think as American citizens, everyone should be involved in this matters. I mean, we're shouting Black Lives Matter. We're shouting for equality. We're shouting for humanity. I mean, you saw the picture of my 92-year-old great-grandmother. I mean, we're still fighting. We're still advocating. This is not just a topic for athletes or just for um, workers out in different fields. This is a topic for all American citizens. This is about equality. This is about living life. This is about um, being treated equal. And this is a topic for everyone, regardless of your profession. Brianna Turner, we thank you so very much for your time and for sharing your thoughts on such sensitive issues. And we wish you nothing but success both on and off the court. Thank you. Thank you.